All right, it's time to compare CMake and Make again, but this time with code that uses a third party library. So, a quick summary of the rules I'm going to compile the same code using CMake and Make, and I'm going to try to make the two build systems do roughly the same thing within reason. And just like last time, I've borrowed code from the CMake tutorial. This one uses Raylib to open up a pretty little window and print a message. Let's get started. Here's the CMake lists script that goes with the example code you saw before, this example code. So there are some familiar parts to it. Up the top, you've got the usual header with the minimum uh, CMake version, the project's name. And then down here, you've got the source files being added to our executable called hello window. And then here's something new. So Raylib gets linked in using this target link libraries call. Now, if you have Raylib installed correctly on your machine, then this would be all that's required. However, imagine that you're a developer who's just downloaded this project and you try to build it and you get this error message. So now you have to go out on the internet, find Raylib, download and install it on your system. Now that's just one, this is a small project. Imagine you have a big project with like 10 dependencies, 20, 50, maybe even 100 dependencies, and you have to go track them all down one by one. Uh, I hate projects like that. It's time consuming, it's frustrating. You got all this stuff to do just to get to the point where you can build the code and then finally work on it. So this is where CMake's fetch content module comes in. You can see I, I include fetch content here. Fetch content can not only link you to any third party library or find it if you've got it installed on your system, it will download and build it for you if it's not. So this scripting code here is what allows us to, basically if somebody takes this project and they start building it, if they don't have Raylib version 4.5.0, this will go and fetch it from the internet and build it for them. It'll work out of the box, as long as you have an internet connection. I'm sure some devs will now loudly insist, use a package manager like Conan or VC package. Notice how in true C++ style, there are multiple incompatible options. Yeah, I feel your pain. Anyway, package managers are certainly an option and they're worth looking into. However, they're not a standard part of CMake, so I'm not going to use them here. Also, I prefer to keep dependencies to an absolute minimum if possible, and that includes build system dependencies. What else is in this uh, CMake lists file? Uh, yeah, there's a, a workaround for Raylib and Clang up here, and there's another workaround for Apple's frameworks. OS developers, please stop inventing new ways to do the same thing. I get it. You want to have an edge over the competition, but all you're really achieving is to make things more complicated for all of us. Extra lines of code just to get around your specialness. Anyway, this short script links our code to Raylib and it'll download and build Raylib if necessary. And once that's all done, then you'll get this pretty little window right here. On to GNU make. Now, make has no fetch content module, so getting it to do exactly the same thing is gonna be a bit tricky. Let's start with just linking to Raylib if it's already available on the system. And that's actually quite easy. All you need here is to add to the ldlibs dash L Raylib. Uh, and in this case, we need to also link to OpenGL, GDI, and WinMM. You can see this is hard coded for Windows. If I were to make this multi-platform, this would be a bit more complicated, but let's keep it simple for now. And what that does is this gets added to the linker's command line parameters and tells the linker when it's linking everything together, link to Raylib, OpenGL, and these other things. And that's done. However, we're back to needing to track down and install Raylib make that a little bit easier, I have added it to the readme. I've given a, a link to the direct download to the source code so people can find it without having to track it down. But this certainly isn't equivalent to the CMake lists file. So let's go one step up. Second attempt, let's put Raylib in a third-party subdirectory so it's right there. 
So the way this one works is I've created a third party subdirectory. Uh, we're going to put Raylib inside there. And here in the make file, I've added include third party slash asterisk.mk. And notice I've put that under the all build rule because we want the all build rule to be the default. If we put it above, then it's going to treat one of our third party uh, build rules as the default and we won't make our project. So what this does is if you have, you can have multiple third party libraries and you just need to have a .mk file for each. Here's the raylib.mk and what it does is to C flags for compiling this dash capital I, it has to be capital I, in lowercase i means something else, gives the path to the raylib headers. So this allows the compiler to find Raylib's header files, which we need in order to compile anything that uses it. And then under linker flags, the dash capital L, again, capital L is important, lowercase l is for linking to libraries, dash capital L adds a path to the linker's um, link library search path. So this makes libraylib.a available. And then finally, we have this extra depths variable that we add libraylib.a to. And what that does is we add extra depths down here to our build rule for build, linking the final program together. And what that does is it tells make, before you can link it together, you need to make sure that libraylib.a has been built. And then everything works nicely. Now, if you look here, you'll notice that the raylib third-party Raylib subdirectory is empty. That's because I want people to be able to download this example and I want to keep the uh, download very compact. So yes, all the code and the scripts and examples that you see in this video will be downloadable from the Kia campus for creator and elite tier. So I still have the link to the download and just say just un unpack it into the third-party Raylib subdirectory. Attempt two works quite well but it's still not on par to our CMake script because it can't automatically download and build third-party dependencies. I was originally going to stop right here because Make simply has no equivalent to fetch content. But then I thought, you know what? It's actually not that hard to do. You just need two additional tools. Wget to fetch the third-party library source code from the internet and unzip to unarchive it into our third-party subdirectory. And if you've got those two installed, then you can add this little snippet to your Raylib build rule. And the way this works, the first line, effect wildcard, this checks if Raylib's make file is there. You're using make the make file as a proxy for the presence of the whole Raylib, make, uh, Raylib project. You could equally use Raylib's readme or some source files or whatever. Well, it doesn't matter. What this does is this checks, is has, has Raylib been downloaded and unarchived into the right place? If yes, this gets skipped. If not, this code gets run. So wget will download the Raylib source code from the very same URL that I originally put in the readme. And then unzip will unzip it to the third party subdirectory. And from there, the Raylib library can be built as per attempt two. Uh, oh yeah, you also need to make sure that this extra depth appears first in our linker rules uh, list of dependencies. And that's because if it's the other way around, then make will try to build our source files before Raylib is available, and it's going to fail with missing header file errors. And just like that, we have a make file that is roughly equivalent to the CMake list. Okay, I, I've skipped the Apple frameworks workaround. Uh, it's a minor thing that could be added. But beyond that, it does roughly the same thing. Of course, the CMake script is a lot shorter, and it also works with any compiler, whereas our make file, you, know, you can see it's, it's longer, and it's hard-coded to GCC. But we've managed to do the same thing with make and we didn't even have to resort to external shell scripts, although we did need two additional tools to, to get there. This video is part of a series on C, C++ build systems. CMake and Make aren't the only ones, there will be more. So the next video should appear over here when it's ready. If you want to learn how to use CMake properly, 
then head over to cmaketutorial.com. The CMake tutorial goes into a lot more depth than I can do here. Uh, that's it for now. I'll see you next time.